everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the True Safety Podcast. My name is Seth Silvers, and usually I'm on the other side of the microphone in the background as a producer, but today um, I'm coming in here and Apollonia and I are going to talk about some things that are happening at the company and also just some of the things that Apollonia has been learning over the last couple months. So Apollonia, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? I am doing awesome. I had two sick babies last night, so I'm happy to be here. I'm happy I'm surviving and alive. And yeah, it was a crazy night last night, but all is good. Great. That's <laughs> great. I think it's important to have some of these episodes where we dive a little bit deeper into some of what you've been learning um, and just some of really what's going on in the safety industry. Our last batch of episodes, we've had a lot of amazing guests, but we always want to kind of stop and pause and reflect on what's going on. Today, we want to talk about something that it's actually came up in some of your interviews recently, um, which is the aspect of you are a female um, and a minority, and you are leading a safety company in an industry that is primarily dominant by men, um, historically, at least. And, you know, we're seeing some changes in that. And we've had some amazing women on the show that are doing awesome things in safety. But we really wanted to talk about this. So to, to start off, before we kind of dive into some of like what you've learned as a woman being in a male dominant industry, um, like let's go back to some of the early days, like in your early days as a safety professional before you were the CEO, um, how did you, how were things maybe different because uh, you felt like, you know, I guess, how did you feel like things were different because you were a woman as opposed to if you were a man out there yeah. as a safety pro? <laughs> Yes, I fe I felt like I was definitely not taken serious. I mean, that was right off the bat. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to work twice as hard as you know. I just I don't know if that was true, but I felt like that. I felt like I had to work twice as hard to gain the same respect. Maybe um, I feel like even maybe to this day, I still get questioned a lot about my qualifications. So if I tell somebody that I own a safety company or anything like that, I mean, or, or if we like start a new product, if we even like launch something new, I will commonly, it's so weird. I'll commonly get asked like, what makes you think you could do that? Or what, like, what is your education again? Or how long have you guys been in business? So do you think that is, and like, do you, do you think that it's often like intentional people are like, thinking like, oh, you're a woman, you can't do it? Or like, is it subconscious stereotypes? Like, why do you think that you've, why do you think that is? And why do you think you've had to, you know, do that? I honestly, I don't know. I like to give everyone the benefit of a doubt and yeah. just think that, oh, this happens to everyone. Like, I just think maybe it's I don't know, maybe it happens to everyone, but like launching our CDL school, I have had people call me out of nowhere and say, Hey, I see what you're up to. Like, what is your education again? Like, what is your background? How long have you been doing this? What are the instructors about? And I get that though, you know, like those are valid questions and give them straightforward answers. And, but I, I feel like I've always been questioned. And what's interesting about it is I've had those, you know, those like subconscious thoughts, like, well, you know, what is that about? Or were they asking me that because I'm younger, because I'm a girl, whatever. But interviewing some of the other safety professionals on the podcast, it was universal amongst every single girl that I talked to is they were like, oh my gosh, I feel like, especially in the beginning, I had to I had to explain, well, I have a bachelor's degree in occupational health and safety. I have 10 years experience in the industry, like just to feel confident enough to, to go after something like every girl I've talked to said that they waited till they were over triple quadruple qualified just to start something. And so I realized that it like maybe isn't just me <laughs> that like a lot of girls go through it. But I mean, I do remember starting out and just being so afraid, like very timid. And I just remember like not wanting to be a girl, like, <laughs> like when I was out there not being, I didn't want to be seen as a girl when I was out in the field. 
So I would try to like hide my ponytail underneath like my FRs and my hard hat. And I just tried to make it seem like I was a dude pretty much <laughs> because I was so afraid of getting picked on. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt too. And I think that humans, I think that overall, when we see things being done a certain way, we typically assume that they should continue to be done a certain way. Yeah. Um, and this is why we need like people to come along and innovate. But I think that in general, if we see an industry where usually it's a lot of men because it's highly labor intensive, then I I do, we know there's jerks out there. We know there's idiots out there that like, they truly think that women can't do the job as well. Um, yeah. But I think for a lot of people, it's more just like, we've seen men in this industry. And so we assume we're going to keep seeing men in this industry. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, so I think that that doesn't make it any better, but I, th I think people just, we assume that things are going to happen the same way. And when they're, when they're not, we're like, well, what's going on here? Um, yeah. You used to have to explain yourself more as qualifications. You know, now you've been in business seven years this year, you were um, Forbes 30 under 30 or uh, in education across the world. Um, yeah. Are you still having to do this? Are you still having to let you, do you feel like over explain and over qualify yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, like just launching this new class in the company, I've had so many people call and ask pretty much what makes me think that I could do something like this. Right. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, but yeah, yeah I do. I, I, I still feel like that. So when we were talking about, um, before we started this recording, we were talking about this and kind of talking about some of the lessons that you've learned. And, um, I think that I, I really like them because, you know, we were talking about self-awareness, talking about saying no to things and we'll dive into those. But, um, a lot of the lessons you were saying were more just about being a good leader. It's not about like being a good female leader or being a good male yeah. leader. It's like a good leader is a good leader. Tell me a little bit more about that, that approach to learning some lessons from this. Yeah, I think that if I'm if I'm thinking about what did I what have I learned the most as an entrepreneur? I mean, just as a business owner, and I feel like I've learned a lot to say no to all the work. I mean, I used to say yes, not all the work, but I used to say yes to everything. Like, yes, we'll do that project. Yes, somebody was hurt on Christmas, so we'll go and do it. Um, we'll do every weekend, we'll do an evening class. We'll, you know, we'll just, yes, yes, yes. Yes. To every customer, um, bend over backwards. And I do feel like that is a good strategy at first. <laughs> like if someone were to ask me, how do I get my business started? I probably would say freaking take on all the work and, you know, make sure you're profitable, but like hustle. Um, but I guess now in this phase of the business, we, we're not saying yes to absolutely everything. And I, I feel like I know now what customers we work best with and what cultures those companies have, what mindsets those companies have that we work best with and that work best with my team too. Because, I, you know, I know right now everyone on the team, everyone's personality style, and I know if, if, we would jive really well with a customer or not. So I'm pretty selective on who we take on. Right. And then it, that kind of gets more into like self-awareness, which when you were looking back, like, okay, what have some lessons been that I've learned as a woman in a male industry? Um, so you, you mentioned self-awareness, explain that to me. And why has that been important for you as a leader in this industry? I, I feel like I've learned so much about myself and I learned really quick that I'm, I'm not a very straightforward person <laughs> and I had to learn that and be self-aware of that. So that way I can be very transparent with even my own team members and say, Hey, I have a really hard time being straightforward. So it's hard for me to give tough feedback. And so here it is. And I, I, I realized that even if you struggle with that, it's okay because you can, you can set it up just the way I did. Hey, this really, you know, it sucks in it. I'm not the best at giving this type of feedback, but here it is. And then I can, I could do it like that, you know, when I, when I set it up in that way. So that way 
you know, my, and then my team members know how I communicate too. And so I think that, I think that that was really important for me to, to, to understand. And because ultimately too, like if I can't give tough feedback, if I can't give tough feedback to customers, to employees, then um, that's ultimately hurting them. So I think just coming up with different ways to, to combat that has been interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like that's a good leadership principle. It's not a good like leadership principle for a woman or for yeah. a man. And so I yeah. love that, like when being approached with this, and I think a lot of people are looking for, you know, for you to say like, oh, well, women in the industry need to do this, 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 and this. And it's like, if you're a leader, be a, be yeah. a good leader, like regardless yeah. of the background you came from, like if you lead and the I think I'm naive at times to where I think that good leadership, good talent, good skill will rise to the top. Yeah. Um, and I, I think in most cases it does. Is that kind of the approach that you've taken from like leadership of like, I'm just going to be as good of a leader as I can and trust that that will, that will lead us. Oh gosh. That's a good question. Um, I would actually have to say, no, <laughs> I'd have to say like, here's something really, really interesting. I've never thought about it this way before, but I am a very charismatic, high energy, um, big vision type of person. And if you were to ask me what a great leader looked like and, you know, what it felt like to be in a room with that type of person, I would have described that because I worked for somebody that, that was like that. And I, and that was like the best leader for me. Right. And I followed that person. And so I became that person. Um, but you know, something, and, and so that was my definition of a great leader. But what I realized is that, you know, working with different types of employees and team members and clients, but, you know, I'll talk mainly to my team. Not everybody views a great leader as that. You know, a great leader, of course, does what they say they're going to do. You know, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. They're not afraid to, like, still do the work. Those are all core principles. But not everybody feels comfortable around a big visionary type of person because I realized that I could offset somebody who really likes security and, um, and like, to keep things the same. You know, so I had, a, I realized that being big, you know, big vision and always talking about that, like that, that is good, but I also need to talk about the day-to-day -day things and show people like how, you know, what we're doing on the front lines to be grounded and stay consistent and not everything is changing. And I have to show consistency too. Right. So, yeah. And I, I, I have to I check love in. That. I love that because you're, you're initially, you're getting at this point of like you being a good leader doesn't mean you leading like somebody else. It means you like tapping into like how, how leadership looks the best for, for you and for your situation. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely say that I've, it's gosh, I can't go back to it being all about the team, you know, and what they need right. and I think that I think that's been my biggest learning lesson this year is just like staying really plugged in with the employees and understanding how everyone needs to be led, what they need, what motivates them. And um, yeah, not everybody likes to talk about big ideas, big right. grandiose ideas. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I learned that. Um, uh, I've definitely learned that in my days uh, as well and learned that even with like the differences between me and my spouse. Like I love talking about the big ideas, but sometimes yeah. you got to get the work done in the day to day too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the piece that I love about this is like, you're kind of talking about this self-awareness and really embracing, embracing who you are and embracing a situation you come from. And so, you know, you talked about early in your days that you were trying to like hide the ponytail and not wear makeup and, um, and not that your journey's just been about like embracing that you're a woman, but you look at being a female CEO, you look at being from a minority community, like you look at those as advantages, don't you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Definitely. I think that I do get those types of questions a lot from peer groups or entrepreneur groups, CEO groups is, you know, let's talk about the, the disadvantages of 
of being a female owned company or whatever. And I'm like, no, we have it all wrong. At least for me, at least from my perspective, I think it's such an advantage because we stand out. Like if in all the board meetings I've been on and all the CEO entrepreneur groups I've been in, I typically am the only girl or few, you know, there's, I'm not, in the beginning, I was always the only one, but that's a huge advantage mm -hmm. because we stand out and, um, yeah, I just think embrace it now. Wear the yeah, makeup. And just embrace, <laughs> embrace the background that you come from, whatever it is. I think a lot of people are trying to, it's, it's easy to maybe wish that we were from a different background or different things like that. But I think that what you're, what you're getting at is like kind of em embrace your roots in your job um, and embrace, embrace who you are and also focus on, you know, being the best leader you can in the way, in the way that makes the most sense for you. And, and yeah. I love that that's been kind of the formula that's worked well for you as a leader. Yeah, absolutely. I realized too early in my career that um, the Hispanic community was definitely underserved. I mean, I've talked about this on a few podcasts, but when I started, there was a local company that, I mean, I was in-house for a in-house safety for an oil and gas construction trucking company. And when I got there, they were sending all of their employees to like a Spanish safe land class, a Spanish class. And I was just picking up where this company left off and I was sending all my employees to get trained by them. And then just side conversation with one of the guys I was like so how's training like you know how interesting that is the instructor is bilingual and they're teaching safe land and they were like uh no like that instructor isn't bilingual that instructor just speaks English and they read the Spanish PowerPoint for the training <laughs> and I was just like what oh, like that's fraud you can't do that you're robbing people yeah I hope yeah, nobody has any questions yeah, hopefully no one has any questions. I could save your life. And at first I thought, you know, gosh, that's like funny and really sad and what the hell. But then I got really, that really, really got to me. And luckily the OSHA training institution picked up on it too. Not that instance, but they picked up that the Hispanic community, there were 10 times the injuries. There were 10 times the deaths on the job. Um, and in the Hispanic community. And it was like, why? Why are we underserved? Why are there not training classes for Spanish speakers on job sites? Why do why are we putting vulnerable people out there that are risking their lives, you know, and not and not training them? So like I got really curious about that. I partnered with OSHA to provide Spanish classes. I hired employees. Oh, in the beginning, true safety, I don't know if you knew this, but like in the beginning, I hired mainly bilingual employees mm. um, on the field side because it was really important to me because all of my clients had a small portion of just Spanish speaking employees. Yeah. And so everyone I hired was was very was fluent. Yeah, and I mean, I that's that huge. That was... the population on the DJ, DJI Basin is yep. you'd like you're going to have um, a lot of people that are speaking different languages. So that's super important to have. Yeah. And I can see why those injury numbers are skyrocketing mm -hmm. yeah. um, in communities where there's not the level of support because there's not. I mean, it comes back to education. Uh, yeah, exactly. It comes back to like, you know, everybody having uh, a right to be educated in their own language. Um, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. awesome. Yeah. Well, what would, as we kind of bring this to a close, what would some encouragement be? Um, I don't even want to say just to like female leaders in the safety industry, but maybe just like leaders that feel, um, that are maybe feeling like you did in those early days where they're maybe feeling a little bit insecure or yeah. like they have to overprove themselves. Mm -hmm. They're just feeling like, okay, maybe I, I have to work extra hard in this. What would your words of encouragement be to leaders that find themselves in that position in the safety industry? Yeah. Oh gosh. I would say, I would say let, don't care so much about what people think. I think that would be like a huge piece of advice for me because I was just always so focused on what's everyone think of me? What's everyone think of me? And you know what I learned is that people pick up on intentions. I mean, a lot can come out of your mouth and you can, you know, 
come up with all these things. You could work twice as hard as everyone else. But when you're talking to somebody, you always know where where their intentions are at. And my intentions were always pure. And my intentions were always to serve the guys and girls out in the field. And so I would say, let your work show for your for itself and, and people can read intentions. So don't care so much about opinions and this and that. I mean, when you're out there to do the right thing, people will pick up on it. Mm-hmm. I love that. This has been great. And again, I think some of the, I think there's so much, so many nuggets, so much truth in, um, in this episode from, you know, really embracing your roots and embracing your differences to also, you know, I, I loved what you were saying about leading in the way that's authentic to you and not just trying to replicate some other leader that you saw, um, yeah. really looking at the situation, looking at what's, what's needed. So mm-hmm. Apollonia, thank you always for your vulnerability and being able to just being willing to share with other people what you're learning, um, in your journey. So this has been wonderful to all of our listeners. Uh, make sure you go back and listen to some of our other episodes, uh, especially with, you know, I'm thinking of like Beck Corvin. Um, yes. There's so many, there's, there, I feel like in the last six months, there's been a lot of really solid episodes uh, with um, some other female executives and female leaders in the industry. So go back and listen to some of those because they are great. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much.